My third collection of poems was called uh, The Ghost Train and um, there are a number of poems in it uh, about um, being in Paris on honeymoon and uh, one particular called the L'Orangerie. Uh, the setting of the poem is that wonderful room um, which was specially constructed to take Monet's water lily uh, paintings. And the poem owes a lot, I think, to the imagery of the, the painting. Um, it's, a, it's a honeymoon poem, but the, the sort of remains of a failed marriage are floating somewhere in the background, I think, in this uh, poem. Orangery. We have floated to the surface of Monet's pond this morning in the orangery. Somewhere among discarded buttonholes, bedraggled bouquets, the wreaths of drowned sorrows. Your face grows secret and lovely. It is a face of many fathoms in this time and place. I am the lover opening his eyes in mid-kiss as though he might surprise the unique swirl of self, who catches instead, buoyant and timeless and all unaware, you crossing perhaps your exact instant of death, too brimmed with love and living to yield it room for this or many a year. Or you submerged in the not yet carnate moment of giving birth. Primordial blossoms watery nebulae, blurred breathless features in a spawny hush gathering towards us, miming the kiss of light. The, there's a whole sequence of poems here which are about the excitement and novelty even of uh, being an expectant father again after 20, 24 uh, years. I found myself writing a sequence of poems about this while the baby was still uh, in, in the womb. Of course nowadays you can make a start on the, the, the family CD while the baby is still in the womb and um, this, uh, this is a poem about the first home movie so to speak. You the movie um, I wanted to call this poem Fetal Attraction, but my wife objected very strongly to this. <laughs> so it's now called You the Movie. We peer through drizzle on a 12 inch screen. Your one inch shadow stirs behind the grain. You are the new star swum into our ken. You are, you will be, may be, might have been. The bounds of possibility in one unfocused image, the cave of the unborn. A silent classic, a chiaroscuro pan through ghostly footage, primitive as dawn. Outside the window gathers arctic showers. Your photogenic heart within its layers is, meanwhile, stealing the show. No carking cares, it throbs and throbs at twice the speed of ours. I suppose that this is a sequence of poems in which uh, both both public and private um, matters inter inter intersect. It was a particularly violent time uh, in, in the north of uh, Ireland, but at the same time there were also rumours in the air of a possible peace. And uh, so uh, all that is, I hope, uh, reflected in the poem. Um, it became a traditional thing at that time that the, the IRA called a ceasefire during the, the weekend of Easter, um, the Easter ceasefire. Um, one, one particular year we were planning a holiday in the Lake District in, in the north of England, but uh, the weather was so bad and uh, the, there was also the possibility of a, a miscarriage uh, and for, for these reasons, we ended up uh, staying, staying at home. 
The poem is called The, um, the Easter Ceasefire. The week began with blood drops, stains more than blood on a bathroom tissue. A tense suspended day when it seemed you had stopped moving. Between pains, less pains than twinges, your mother curled in bed, hugging the inverted hammock of herself where you slept or played possum. You kicked again languidly next morning, but better safe, we drove to the hospital, and there you were, placidly active, insouciantly unaware on the small screen. Outside there was snow falling, sleet more than snow, the spring so day to day it had no sense of weather to call its own. The doctor advised rest, so better safe from gales and rough crossings we stayed at home, our planned break receding like the raw wind note in the chimney. That was how we survived the Easter ceasefire, three days without blood, a housebound phantom holiday where spring had failed to happen and all the ferries sailed at odd hours between storms, where snowflakes fell on Windermere and Grasmere and the slopes of Skiddaw, big comforting dollops there was no mistaking as the real thing. In the fraught silence between might be and might have been, we edged towards Saturday and the hoped for all clear. God, I started feeling emotional myself as I was reading that. Surely <laughs> does. Um, one of the things I noticed as I was writing that sequence was that many of the poems in it are very formally structured. You know, there's a lot of um, um, rhyme, for example, um, and uh, you know the use of traditional forms like quatrains. Uh, there's a villanelle in there somewhere, and. Um, I'm not sure, I can't quite remember whether this was deliberate on my part or whether it, that was just the way the, the poems occurred to me. But certainly after a while, um, I had a sort of a, an amused sense that I was setting up in competition with my wife, a sort of creative competition in which she was producing the baby and I was producing the poems. <laughs> God, men are ridiculous too, aren't they? My daughter, Helen, was born on the 12th of August, 1994. Helen. The war will soon be over, or so they say. Five floors below, the Friday rush hour starts. You're out and breathing. We smile to hear you cry. Your long fingers curl around our hearts. The place knows nothing of you and is home. And different skies look on while August warms the middle air. We wrap you in your name. Peace is the way you settle in our arms. That, that, it sort of rounds off a collection which began with uh, a different Helen, who is Helen Keller. Um, and that, that was another deliberate kind of shaping uh, element. cup of coffee.